sesame, some things like sesame oil. Hmm. Yeah, Sybils and their fancy food. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, lecture 10 1 input, impedance, and admittance. Notice that we are also on a new chapter 10 impedance based modeling. So, I told you. Um, uh, last week that we were transitioning uh, uh, kind of in a lot of ways to this new transfer function modeling um, um, approach. So most of the models that we're going to consider for the rest of the course really are going to be transfer function based models. Um, we'll talk for a couple weeks about frequency response functions and those are very, very related to the transfer function. So um, the things we'll do with them will be, there will be a lot of things we'll do with them, I guess. But uh, the central model that we'll use, mathematical model that we'll use, will be the transfer function. <coughs> we, in uh, chapter three, we briefly introduced the transfer function, and then we like, kind of left it hanging there. And then in the um, uh, ch chapter nine, we just revisited it. We just remembered, okay, this is what the definition is of a transfer function. And then we learned a little bit about it, about the poles and the zeros. And we learned how the poles are very tightly coupled to, well, they are identical to the eigenvalues of the system, which are also equal to the roots of the characteristic equation of the system. So um, these values are of, uh, I guess, model independent. It doesn't matter which form of model you're using, an input-output differential equation, or a state-space model, or a transfer function, you're going to end up with the same quantities, either as the eigenvalues, or as the roots of the characteristic equation, or as the um, poles. So we learned about those, and we learned a little bit about, OK, the stability then, all that stuff that we knew about eigenvalues and we knew about roots of the characteristic equation applies also to poles. But um, we still have, uh, we know how to find the transfer function um, using essentially two methods. We can have an input-output differential equation. We can take the Laplace transform of that and solve for the output over the input. So we know how to do that. That one's pretty easy. We can also use the state space modeling uh, uh, approach where we model the system in state space and then we use that nice formula C times SI minus A inverse B plus D, right? And that gives us the transfer function matrix and gives us the transfer function from each input to each output. Great, but we have not yet learned a technique to go directly to the transfer function from say a linear graph model or from a system schematic. And that's mainly what chapter 10 is about. Okay, So chapter 10 gives us a way to go from the schematic or linear graph to the transfer function directly. And I don't know, I, I guess, um, so there, I'm going to teach two methods. The first method, I guess, uh, I almost never use. Um, it's just, uh, it's interesting that it exists and it does solve the problem in general, but it's practically like doing this, the state space model. So you might as well just do the state space model in my opinion, um, because then you'll have both models. If you need a transfer function afterwards, then great, you can find it using this formula. Uh, so I'll teach you the first method, and then I'll be like, yeah, I mean, great, but you, I mean, it, you might as well just find the state-space model. The second method is a lot more, so the first method is very algorithmic, right? Um, second method is going to look, it's going to be a lot more like, okay, this is what I want, this is what I have, how am I going to find a way to get that? And, and that method is sort of like the shortcut method, and it's, um, 
what I think the most value is in this chapter is learning that method. Um, that and thinking about systems in terms of their impedances. I think that that is another very valuable aspect of this chapter. So, so uh, we'll learn the general method, but really like learning how to do this sort of shortcut method to find a transfer function in sort of like a quick and dirty way. That's that's uh, one of the main purposes of the chapter, and the other main purpose, I guess, is to think about systems in terms of of impedance um, more generally. Okay, so without further ado, we now introduce a generalization of the familiar impedance and admittance of electrical circuit analysis in which system behavior can be expressed algebraically instead of differentially. We begin with generalized input impedance. So that was really an interesting blip on our map, right? Like way back at the very uh, uh, beginning of mechatronics, we learned about how to do impedance analysis. So for steady state sinusoidal inputs, we could represent the signals in this phasor form. We defined this um, object called the impedance of different, or this mathematical object called impedance that uh, models different types of elements like resistors, have impedance, but so do capacitors, so do inductors. And it depends on frequency of the input. So we learned about those, and we found that we could do analysis without having to do differential equations, which was pretty nice. So we, we liked it. We were a little uncomfortable with all the complex numbers, but we didn't have to do differential equations, so we appreciated that part. Um, and then we sort of left it. What we're going to do now is like build that back up, but it'll apply to all types of systems, not just electronic systems. And it'll, it's a little bit more general, too, because we're doing it instead of being, um, it's, instead of having uh, the frequency in there explicitly, we'll leave it in, with a Laplace S in there, and that actually makes things a little bit easier. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Consider a system with a source as shown in figure 10.1. So here we go. We have a source that is going to supply, I mean, it's either going to be a, an across variable source or it's going to be a through variable source if it's an ideal source. And remember how these work is if it's an across variable source where V is the generalized across variable and F is a generalized through variable. Um, how this works is if it's an across variable source, that is determined, right? If it's ideal, let's say it's like a, a voltage source and it says 10 volts, it's always going to be 10 volts, right? And then um, you connect it up to the system and it's going to draw some current into the system. Uh, and that's a property of, of the system. It depends on what the system is doing, how much current that it gets drawn. Similarly, if it was a through variable source, then F would be specified, so say it was, I, I think using the electrical analogy is really helpful here. Um, thinking of this as being a current source, it's going to supply whatever current is, is uh, 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 specified, so say it was a 3 amp um, uh, source. 3 amps are going to go in, and uh, the voltage across it is going to be dependent on what system you connect it to. So that's that's this this system that, or this is the source we're considering. Um, the ideal source specifies either V in or F in, and the other variable depends on the system. Let a source or let source variables have Laplace transforms, V in of S and F in of S. So all we did was just take the Laplace transforms of them, and now they're functions of S instead of functions of T. So. No big deal. We define the system's input impedance, Z, and input admittance, Y, to be the Laplace domain ratios, V over F and F over V. Clearly, there's a relationship then between Z and Y, and that is that the admittance is just the reciprocal of the impedance. And we don't talk about admittance a lot. Um, 
because of this, because there's this just reciprocal ratio. It's just like, so sometimes you'll hear people talk about a, a materials conductivity, um, and then you'll also hear people talk about a, a materials resistivity. Well, they're just, they're just reciprocals of each other. So you're, you're, uh, it depends on which way you want to think about it. So that's, that's the relationship between uh, input impedance and input admittance as well, or impedance and admittance. They are reciprocals of each other. So we just typically focus on impedance and then recognize that some people will like to think about it in terms of admittance and they're weird and we don't know what's up with them, but we just deal with it. So both Z and Y can be considered transfer functions. For a through variable source Fn, the impedance Z is the transfer function to a cross variable Vn. For an across variable source Vn, the admittance Y is the transfer function to through variable Fn. Often, however, we use the more common impedance Z to characterize systems with either type of source. So <clears throat> that's me saying we're going with impedance mostly. Admittance is OK, but we don't care that much about it um, in this class because I don't like it as much. This is not as intuitive to me, but for some people it's more intuitive. Note that Z and Y are system properties, not properties of the source. An, imp or an impedance or admittance can characterize a system of interconnected elements or a system of a single element as the next section explores. So w what we've got is this, this source that's connected up to some system. It has some impedance or some admittance. So say it's in a cross variable source, you connect it up. Depending on what the impedance is or the admittance is, um, it's going to draw a through variable accordingly. So if it has a very low impedance associated with it, then if you apply this, this across variable source to it, a lot of through variable will flow through. If, on the other hand, you have a very high impedance and you connect up that across variable source to it, then it will flow a very small amount, a very low amount of through variable. Okay. So we're going to start out small, baby small steps, just doing one element at a time. So we're pretending like this system is just one element for now, and we'll, we'll go there. So the impedance and admittance of a single ideal one port element is defined from the Laplace transform of its elemental equation. Generalized capacitors, so uh, they have this elemental equation, so where uh, C is the generalized capacitance. If, you're, if, you're, if you don't remember, if you're like, okay, this, uh, I don't remember what the generalized capacitance is for a given system, like a, like a mechanical system or a fluid system, um, I encourage you to take a look at table C1 in appendix C2. Um, this is the one table to rule them all, and this is the table that took me a long time to make, but I'm very proud of, so feel free to use it. Um, it tells you for each of the different energy domains uh, a lot of stuff about it. What's the across variable? What's the through variable? Um, the A-type, T-type, and D-type elements, there's a lot of info on each. So um, we call uh, uh, the capacitance, the generalized capacitance for a mechanical rotational system um, is the moment of inertia, J. Okay, And the corresponding elemental equation is given here. And the impedance of it, which we're going to define in just a moment, is given as 1 over js. So that's, that's very useful in this table. So let's go back. Let's go back to our other thing here, and we'll define what the impedance is for a generalized capacitor, and then we'll switch back and see it. Okay. So here's the elemental equation. We take the Laplace transform of it, and we solve for what the 
what the uh, 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 across variable over the through variable is, and then what the through variable over the across variable is. And um, one gives us the impedance. So Zc is 1 over the generalized capacitance times s. And the admittance for completeness is the reciprocal just Cs. So say we have a thermal system and we don't remember what the generalized capacitance is. Okay, so let's go back to, oh, to our thermal system, so thermal. And our A type, our generalized capacitance, um, is the thermal capacitance, C. Okay, we use C for that too. And this is the elemental equation. This is the impedance. So that, that's how the table works, I guess. Um, generalized inductors uh, have the elemental equation given here. Take the Laplace transform and solve for VL over FL and also FL over VL. Gives us the impedance which is just LS and the admittance is the reciprocal YL equals 1 over LS. So we could look up say, so we don't remember what the uh, generalized inductance is for a mechanical translational system. So let's look it up. Uh, generalized inductance for a mechanical translational system is 1 over the spring constant, 1 over k. Okay. And then uh, this is the elemental equ equation, and this is the impedance. So the generalized capacitance was 1 over k, so C, or, or sorry, L, g bleh. the generalized inductance was 1 over k. So the impedance of the spring is generalized inductance times S. Generalized inductance is 1 over K. So we have S over K as our impedance. So it's kind of like a cheat sheet in that like, you don't have to go through that process every time. You can just look it up in the table and be like, oh, this is the impedance of that element. I don't have to remember it. It's kind of nice. <coughs> So finally, we have generalized resistors, which have the elemental equation here. And we take the Laplace transform. It just changes those functions of time to functions of s, the Laplace transform variable s. We can just solve for the ratio. And probably unsurprisingly, the impedance of a generalized resistor is, a, is the resistance r. And the admittance is just the reciprocal 1 over R. OK. Any questions on that? Oh, the capacitor, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Scrolling requests? Okay. I'm here to serve I, your needs. Is there no T-type element for thermal? No. So now you notice that that is gone in the table? Yeah. Empty. There is no T-type. Um, and I do feel like there's probably some like really cool deep reason for that, but I don't know what it is. Like it, it, uh, it doesn't have. There, there is no element that behaves like the t-type element does. Where the so the through variable has a time derivative associated with it. Then, so then it would be the heat flow rate time derivative is proportional to 
the temperature difference like that's not an i guess like an element that shows up a lot in thermal systems or ever so like we don't we don't define an element to be a t-type for that system which i think is mostly because i mean this is my take on it it's mostly because the Q is already a time rate of change of something, so they're, they're just proportional. So Q and T are proportional, and that's a resistance. And it's like we didn't have any resistance elements, like a true D-type that dissipates energy from a thermal system. So it was like we had to like bump everything, like displace everything up a level. And so the, the resistance type element um, is more like a, like it's sort of more like a t-type element in the thermal system and so then like the t-type there it does, isn't a function for it in in this in way of conceiving of things I mean like I think that we could I, I mean this is I don't know I, I like I'm just a little bit speculating right here but I think that we could actually define the through variable in a thermal system to be the integral of the heat flow rate and then we could then get away with having a t-type and a resistance but I, I think that it would be counterintuitive to us and I don't think we would like it so I think that that's why we go with this but I don't know for sure um, it's just yeah it's a thing that I don't quite get that's just one yeah, I wish I had a good answer for you, but it's just it, there isn't one. Is my unsatisfactory answer? Okay. So uh, impedance and interconnected elements. So we're now we're gonna like up the ante because we looked at individual elements now, found out what their impedances are. Now we're gonna connect them up. So as with electrical circuits, impedances of linear graphs of interconnected elements can be combined in two primary ways, in parallel or in series. Elements sharing the same through variable are said to be in series connection. And elements connected in series, like this, have equivalent impedance Z and admittance Y, just as the sum of the impedances, and as the... Um, uh, Fraction one over the sum of one over each impede or each admittance. Conversely, elements sharing the same across variable are said to be in parallel connection. And elements connected in parallel, like this, have equivalent impedance Z and admittance Y. So we have the impedance equation, one over the sum of one over z's. And this is just, so the way I remember which one is which is, as I remember that impedance for a resistor is just the resistance, right? So if I'm going to combine resistors in series, I add them. So that's this equation. If I'm going to combine uh, uh, resistors in parallel, I have to use that one over the sum of one over the resistances, which is this equation. So I just remember that impedance is like resistance and then I just use that every time. I'm not saying that's how you have to do it. Okay. No, I am. You have to. You have to think like that. This is a very authoritarian situation. Find ourselves that. <clears throat> Uh, okay, let's do an example. So for the circuit shown, find the input impedance. So we're actually doing this for a circuit, but it could be any system. Uh, it's just that circuits are the, probably the most intuitive for us to apply this to, so let's start there. Next lecture, we'll do a fluid system. So. <laughs> Okay, so walk me through this. We've got we've got uh, a couple parallel, few in series here, maybe. So I feel like we should just say it, just one liner. This is in series with this, 
is in series with this combined, which is parallel connection, right? So that, that's pretty easy. So we can just say that z of s is equal to um, whatever the impedance is of the resistor R1 plus whatever the impedance is of the, is it the capacitor? Yeah, the capacitor C plus whatever the impedance is of the combined um, L and R, right? So uh, L and R2. So um, I mean, technically, this is 1 over 1 over uh, ZL plus 1 over ZR2. We could have used the shortcut formula we know from resistors, too, if we wanted, but either one's fine. And, and then let's, let's just go ahead and plug it. I mean, we, we're pretty much done. We could just write over here ZR equals ZC equals ZL equals, and technically we're done. But let's, let's plug in what these are. So R1 is the impedance of R1. 1 over Cs is the impedance of the capacitor. And uh, 1 over L, so Ls is the impedance of the inductor. And R is the R2 is the impedance of ZR2, or the impedance of R2. So kind of a mess. You guys want to you guys want to simplify it? Let's just do it. We don't have anything else to do, like because I like stopped at the end of this lecture for the other class, so we we could just let's just finish it. Might as well. NBD. So we got to find a common denominator. Ugh. Right, right. We got to do that multiple times. We got to do that down here. So. We have R2 and times LS. R2, LS is going to be the common de uh, denominator for these. So we're going to have R1 plus. We could try to add these two first, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. Let's find a common denominator here. So that's just going to be CS, right? So um, R1. C S plus one divided by C S um, plus one over it's going to be R two um, plus L S over R two. Uh, LS. Remember that we could have gotten to this point if we just used the shortcut formula, right? Um, so let's simplify again. So we'll repeat this term R1CS plus 1 over CS plus R2LS over R2 plus LS. Find a common denominator. Well, there's not a lot in common here. So we've got um, pretty much R1C, oh, R1CS plus 1 times R2. plus LS um, plus R2 L C S squared divided by um, C S R plus R2 plus LS. Yeah? I'm hoping you guys are better at algebra than me, because I'm just, you know, it's been a while. Uh, this came from, I needed a common denominator for, for both of these terms. So I needed to multiply everything by CS times R2 plus, um, L S over C S 
R2 plus LS. Um, and when I did that, um, th this, yeah, well, because I had an S here and I had an S from there. Um, so that's why I got that. Is that right? You guys are better at algebra than me. I know it. I know it. I haven't done this in like literally years. It looks right. Looks right? Still got it. Still got it. <laughs> th this comes, so this comes from uh, the one, so when we do it by this term, this, this goes away. Uh, this cancels with that. And so we got this. We only have the CS left. So we have the CS that comes down there, yeah. Boom. Still got it. Mm. So it's so it's so fun. Algebra is the best. It's the best. Okay. So if I didn't get this right, then I would feel really like I it wasn't the best. But um, right now I feel like it's the best. So I mean, we might as well. We're pr practically there. Let's expand and simplify into polynomial each of the numerator and the denominator. The numerator. Um, there's going to be a couple s squared terms that are going to pop out. This one here will pop out. So r1 lc s squared and r2 lc s squared. So we're going to have r1 plus r2 lc s squared. And then our s terms are going to be, um, we're going to have an l S, and then we're going to have an R1, R2, CS. So we'll do L plus R1, R2, C, S. And then we have uh, just R1, or R2, I should say, plus R2. And then in the denominator, we have C S, so LCS squared. And we have uh, R2, Cs. And that, my friends, is, is our input impedance. But notice that, like, actually, this was also the answer. <laughs> It just took a minute to simplify it, right? I'm not completely convinced I got that all right either, but I feel slightly okay about it. I would want to double check that work for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, like, if I messed up in there on the algebra, if I got this right and I messed up on the algebra, I would give myself, like, minus three if it's not right. I've never worked it out before, though, so this is like I don't know if this is the right answer. I made up this problem, so. And so I is very similar. I'm gonna say you're probably right. I think if you give yourself minus one. Minus one yeah. for what? I don't know because if we do the same thing, we can't get minus one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if I just get minus one out of out of what though? Minus one out of a hundred. What? Out of three? <laughs> I'm giving myself full credit if it's only out of three. <laughs> All right. Um, let's pick it up on Wednesday then.